Hello and welcome to Shock Talk Live. On the panel today, we're joined by Jakob Scrum, CEO of Norwegian Airlines, Frank Leeson, President of Aramark Northern Europe, Pablo Antoni, President of AMPM Central America, and Daniel Hooker, who's a senior lecturer at Cornell University. Dan, over to you. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Shop Talk Live. Convenience retail is proving itself to be a very robust format in challenging times. How do we make it even stronger? How do we create the leaders uh, of tomorrow? It's a big question. Perhaps a good start to, to answer that question, <clears throat> excuse me, is to think about the leaders of today. And um, we're going to be speaking to, to Dan Hooker from Cornell, Frank Gleason from Aramark, Jakob Scram from Norwegian, and Pablo and Donny at AMPM um, through the course of the next 45 minutes. Uh, what I'd like to say to everybody in the audience, thanks for tuning in. Please uh, send your questions through um, as we go through today's program and I'll, I'll, I'll try and get to as many of them as I can just to make the most of um, you know, some really interesting guests on, on Shop Talk Live today. Um, and uh, you know, we'll, I think, make it a, a more interesting program if we get to answer some of your questions. Um, one extra word before I speak to, to Dan Hooker at Cornell, uh, really by way of, of background, NACs have been quietly leading the way um, with executive education uh, for, for many years. Um, and um, these leadership programs that NACs have been, uh, that NACs have developed, are really providing uh, executives in our industry with the kind of skills they need uh, to drive the long-term performance of their organizations. And uh, of course, the NACS Executive Leadership course uh, it's, uh, at Cornell, as, as you see on screen, was the original um, NACS Executive Education course. So most people, more people have done that than any other. It was the first. And it's, uh, it's therefore very appropriate that, um, that we speak to, to, to Dan Hooker at Cornell. He's a senior lecturer for executive education at the uh, Cornell SC Johnson College of Business. Um, welcome, welcome to Shop Talk Live, Dan. Hey, good morning, Dan. It's great to be here. Welcome from beautiful Ithaca, New York. You're, 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 you're very welcome. Um, so, um, Dan, you know, before, you know, just before we get into, into the interview, um, you ha yourself have a have a very heavyweight career in, in our industry or the retail uh, FMCG industry, don't you? I mean, you've worked um, with PepsiCo, with Walmart, with Damon Worldwide, and I know you've done a lot of consulting when you were there with some of the big heavyweights uh, in, in our industry, uh, businesses like Wawa, GetGo, that kind of that kind of grade of retailer in the U.S. You're now working in academia. Um, uh, tell us a bit about the. Um, you know the the NAX program at, at Cornell and um, and 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 your work on that before we sort of get into more detail. Sure, let me um, give you a little bit of overview. And, and, and NAX has been a, a great partner with Cornell University. I think we're in our close to our twentieth year in, in running the executive leadership program here. Um, one of the great benefits of being on uh, our beautiful campus is we have the world-renowned Statler Hotel. So the executives that come in from all over the world, the whole program takes place on the hotel or in the hotel. Residents stay at the hotel and all the meetings take place there. But uh, the most critical part of the program is all participants go through an assessment, a 360 degree assessment. And we have this great tool that we use that um, participants will get feedback from their peers their direct reports and their boss and superior. And then they go through a coaching session with our highly trained coaches here and our staff. And that gives them some great insights in their own personal leadership. And then throughout the week, they learn about how they can become better leaders and influence their business, um, the people that they work with, as well as their self. So it's, it's a critical skill set that executives in industry, any industry need. Do you think, I mean, just, just thinking about what you, what you've said, do you think, um, and you, you have a background in, in, the, in our industry yourself, of course. Do you think an increasing professionalization is required given the, 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 the increasing complexity, I, 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 I'd say, for, for executives in our industry? For sure. And, and I think one of the great advantages of the program at Cornell is the faculty that teach 
um, know a lot about the convenience store industry. And I liken the convenience store industry as one of the most challenging, you know, jobs in, in, in all of retail for that matter, because, you know, convenience stores are on the front lines, especially you think about what's going on in, in this country. Um, you know, the, the leaders of the convenience store industry need to be um, very empathetic with not only their associates, but also the customers and the people that would be um, shopping in their stores or in the immediate area. And, you know, those are the skills that we teach at Cornell. Um, I teach my class today and, and I talk a lot about these moments of truths. And that moment of truth can happen when a, a person um, interacts with a, an associate at the cash register or even, you know, the, the person that's out working um, the outside of the store and making sure that the, the gas and the, the, it's a safe environment to shop. So these are critical skills that leaders need and, and the industry is changing so rapidly with technology and, and the COVID especially has, has accelerated everything with touchless retailers. So today's executives need to not only lead, but they also need to be able to adapt and change with what's going on in the world. Well, I couldn't agree with that more. I mean, it's, uh, it, it couldn't, couldn't be true. I think it was true before the current experience. It's certainly truer than ever now, isn't it? Um, one of the questions thinking about your students and watching them progress, I'm sure you get a lot of satisfaction from, obviously, you know, you're, you're only with them a, a few weeks, a short time, as opposed to some of your, you know, your full-time students. But um, do, you, do you enjoy seeing the, their progression and, 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 and the sort of penny drop moments in terms of them perhaps looking at things from a different, more leadership perspective, which I know is very much part of this course? Sure, and, and you can actually really watch it happen throughout the course of the week. Um, in the beginning of the course, participants learn about the instrument that we use for the 360 degree feedback, and then they have these individual coaching sessions. And to be frank, there's some tears in those sessions because what I perceive as myself as a manager or a leader could be very different than what my peer group or my direct reports or even my boss thinks. And so sometimes that gap can be you know, really emotional um, and you can come to some realization that things aren't exactly how I perceive myself. And so those coaching sessions give those, the participants a, a real assessment of, of how the, their um, direct reports and peers see them. And then as they advance through the week, you can notice these aha moments, these moments when they say, you know what, I, I, I can really approach this differently and I can make a big difference. Here's some of the things I can think about, um, whether that's innovation or creativity personal leadership style. We have case studies that um, participants get to work together on to help build their, called it those moments of leadership that they need to have in this you know, very dynamic industry. So by the end of the week, people are just saying, wow, this is a really great course. It's really given me a great um, view of myself and what other people think of me and how I can be a better leader for myself and for my organization, and for my people. So yeah. it's really, it's, it's really amazing to see that happen over the course of a week. I, I, I bet. Look, I'm going to go off script slightly. And I've got to ask this question, um, but uh, you, you, you'll enjoy it. Um, are leaders born or are they made? I, and I know probably you're not going to say I agree with either of those propositions, but uh, I wanted to put the question. Ah, uh, well, um, yes. <laughs> well, it's it's kind of a yes. question, but I, I guess... I, I guess the techniques and the, and the kind of the analysis, the ways of looking at problems that you teach um, help them develop into, in, in, into better leaders, maybe. is the Yeah, our, our, we, we focus on leading the organization, leading others and leading self. And there are tried and true methods that can help you become a better leader. I suppose there's some people that have, can reach a plateau. And then once they reach that plateau, they might be at the top of their um, abilities. But you know, I think it's a little bit of both. You can be born to be a natural leader, um, but you can also be trained. And going through Cornell's executive leadership program can really give you that, that skill set to help you at least think about what you need to do to be a better leader. No, no, very, very good, very good answer. Um, well, let's, um, I'd like you to stay with us, Dan, if you don't mind. And I'd like to bring in uh, Frank Gleason. Um, president of, of, uh, of, of Europe with, uh, with Aramark. And Frank, I mean, if we're talking about, um, I guess, uh, a, a, an example of, uh, you know, an executive who's, who really believes in this, it has to be you, doesn't it? And for personal reasons, because, you know, you've, you've, it, that you have many milestones in your successful career, as, as I know, as well as anybody. But 
But, um, you know, some of the executive education courses that NACS have been providing have, have been important milestones for you, haven't they? Absolutely, Dan. And uh, good afternoon, Dan. Two Dan. Yes. So it's great to talk to you guys from a not so sunny Dublin. Um, so really, I suppose where I would start uh, would be to say I probably came to third level or adult education a bit late. Um, certainly when I grew up through a family retail business, we went straight into the into the shop environment, retail environment. And really, it was only when I kind of hit my 30s, Dan, that I said, well, I need some probably extra education or third level education to help me with the next stage of my career. And I'd left the family business and had worked uh, in other companies. So really what I was looking for is to add something to my kind of energy and my enthusiasm and my work ethic. And really it was around skills training, very important behavioral training. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on. And then the most important one was the leadership training that I received between 30 and 40. They were the kind of formative years of my, of my career. It did start with the Irish Management Institute where I went back and got a third level um, diploma. Then I moved on, I went to Cornell, which was probably the seminal moment for me that the, the 360 feedback I received and the network that I connected with and the environment uh, that you get in somewhere like Cornell and the quality of the program just stepped me up so much. I mean, it was a real, real, real aha moment for me. It was, you know, gave me so much enthusiasm. I came back and, you know, really wanted to learn more and more and more. And it kind of pushed me along the road of leadership development, behavioral development, you know, and all of that has benefited my career because, you know, bear in mind, I'd come through the ranks, you know, as a store manager, working my way through to area management, senior management. But the breakthrough only came when I actually went back and got some education to help me, what I would call the business language, behavioral language and the leadership skills to kind of understand me, understand my people around me and then help me, you know, be all I could be or as good as I could be relative to what I wanted to do. So I think you were born a leader, Frank, but you, you think you became a better leader um, because of, uh, you know, Cornell played a role in that then. Yeah, Dan, you know, I'm a big sports guy. So, you know, uh, I was always a competitive player and I had a certain level of skill so I could run so fast and, you know, I'd, whatever. But, you know, leaders are probably shaped um, through mentoring. And I want to talk about mentoring just for a minute because I've been so lucky through my career to have terrific mentors. Uh, people I worked for, people I work with, network of, of individuals that I connected with through the work in NACS, the work in IBEC and the works in different associations. So I've been learning and learning from others and been mentored by others to go with the skills training, behavioral training. And, you know, that does shape you, make you better. And, you know, it, it really is a journey. And I, I'm a firm believer that you never stop learning. Uh, every time I go to a board meeting or a conference or something, I bring something back. And then my job as a leader in the industry and a leader in my firm and company is to shape the leaders of the future, identify the talent, the people who are hungry, they want to go along the journey and then mold them, guide them and transfer my knowledge to them because that's really what it's all about. And, you know, the benefits for me are, you know what, it helps me do my job better too. Yeah, and, and I guess you're in a position now where you can recommend. Um, we're just uh, we're just uh, showing some of your some of your achievements, Frank, um, as as we talk to you. But but and this is definitely one of them. But the the um, I mean, you're in a position now where you can help. Uh, you know, some of your uh, of your team uh, to, to to you know to take these steps, the steps that you've just took uh, you took personally, uh, and to access some of these courses. So I guess. You know, you're, you know that they work and you know they can help deliver for, for businesses like Aramark as well as, um, as the individuals personally. No doubt about that, Dan. I mean, if you take last summer, I had the privilege uh, to go back to Cornell to be the keynote speaker. And Dan, Dan will remember it because he was there in the audience. And, you know, one of my colleagues, Kevin, was there. Two of my competitors in Ireland, their CEOs or senior leaders were there. So it was great to you know, go back to where it started for me from a leadership perspective, contribute and then listen to the young folks coming through what their thoughts and views and questions and challenges were. So I, I'm a huge advocate. I mean, it's so important to, I suppose, take, but also give back and make sure that, you know, you, you, you do give the benefit of your experience. And again, I talked this about this mentorship thing. It cannot be, 
um, taken too lightly. And, you know, I had the privilege of working with Jakob, who you'll talk about later on. And uh, he was quite a mentor for me in, in, in my career because he was leading the Statoil business when I was involved. So it's a very small world. And, you know, we couldn't, we'd have to mention Hank Armour, who's been a terrific mentor to me. I mean, what a leader in our industry has transformed it over the last 10 years. So mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan, but also I'm, I'm going to give back as much as I can, Dan. Can I interject here, Dan, for a second? Um, yeah. the, the program kicked off last year, and we had um, Hank Armour, Henry Armour, at dinner. And, and what, a, what an amazing individual he is and the stories he can tell. And, and I'm thinking, wow, we, we had our highlight. But then when Frank got there on the last day of the keynote, that was really the highlight of the program. You know, watching the participants go through their 360-year assessment and then listening to Frank tell his story and how he participated. He's had mentors, and he's learned along the way on his journey as an executive. I think that really connected the dots for, for the participants. And, and after that presentation by Frank, thank you for being there, really inspired me to, to think about how we can improve the program and, and, and keep people like Frank involved. So it was really that, wonderful. Dan, that's where to pint a Guinness when you're in Dublin next, okay? You got it. <laughs> when I can get on Jacob's airplane, I'll, be, I'll get over there. <laughs> hey, yeah, absolutely. Support, support Norwegian. <laughs> These things yeah. can be arranged, I think. But um, so... Um, yeah, let's just think about the, the breadth of, Dan, we'll come back to you in a minute because I want to talk about online because uh, obviously that's something which is now going to be possible uh, for Cornell and the other courses. But let's just, uh, Frank, let me just ask you about the breadth of um, educational programs that NACs are offering. And we're just going to pull up a screenshot to show it's very considerable. And the thing that really strikes me is that, you know, the, all, you know, the top Ivy League schools, Wharton, uh, Kellogg, MIT, Yale, as well as um, Cornell, of course, you know, um, you, this is pretty impressive stuff, isn't it? Yeah. So listen, I've been around the next world for oh, 15, 20 years. So I could tell you these programs have been handpicked by Henry and the education team to be the most immersive, high quality and relevant programs for senior or potential senior executives in our industry. And if you just look across the breadth of it, I mean, from the, Cornell leadership one to the women's one at Yale, both leadership ones, both critical for, for our future leaders as we go forward. Then you got the financial one, which is, you know, typically what I find a lot of finance leaders, they get promoted because they're technically good at their job, but they really need some leadership and or relevant training to connect the dots and make them leaders in that world. So I would say that that is a financial, a terrific program for them. Same for the marketing, you know, in Kellogg and the same for obviously the uh, innovation MIT. You could not get a better selection of programs, more relevant, quick as well, a week of your time. I mean, that is not a lot when you're on a journey, a career journey of 20, 30, 40 years to invest. And, you know, they're highly subsidized by, by the sponsors. And, you know, I, I'm a huge advocate because what, what I think they do is they move the, the, the whole industry up in terms of the quality. And that really helps us uh, together in our competitor set, in my mind. I mean, uh, obviously, a lot of uh, we're seeing a lot of people who've been on uh, executives who've been on these these courses um, in 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 the in the photo now, and and I know many many people in the industry who've been on them and are very much like you, Frank, are advocates uh, for it. Um, uh, I, I guess you know, in a way, the you know the interesting you know the interesting thing about the current situation, the pandemic, is that. Um, we, uh, we have a problem in that it's difficult to access these courses physically. It's difficult to go to any events. It's difficult to travel. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's a challenge and our business, everyone's changing their business to, 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 to you know, to adjust. Um, it's obviously very interesting, isn't it, Dan and, and, and Frank, to see that these now, uh, Cornell is, is available online. It's all coming on stream online. I guess there'll be a certain sense of missing the, the comradeship, if you like, and the and the inter- physical interaction and in, in meeting your peers. Um, but um, there are advantages too, aren't there, um, to, to, to the new scenario of, of accessing these online, Dan? And maybe I could just come back to you in a minute, Frank, but maybe I could just ask you about, uh, you know, some of the differences uh, for students when they do it online in October at Cornell. Uh, first, there, it has created challenges, but also opportunities. So being online does enable us to scale. You know, more people can assess the program or access the program. 
uh, you don't need to travel to take the course. So that actually is to some degree a benefit and it helps reduce the cost. Um, that what you refer to the comradeship or that networking that happens um, will be highly missed, but there are creative ways to get around that. And, and one of the things that we'll be doing at the next virtual program is we have a, a celebrity chef in, in Ithaca, Chef James, um, and he's created some recipes that only use convenience store ingredients. So to help connect our um, participants, we're gonna do a contest on uh, what can you prepare with ingredients only bought from a convenience store. That should be a lot of fun and, and a virtual way to keep everyone engaged. So th there's some cost savings, there's some benefit to scale. And in our particular program, one-on-one -on -one coaching and feedback sessions, this environment's very good for that. So, so it, it should be, we should be able to turn the program in and make it a really successful uh, learning experience for all the participants. I, I, Frank, you maybe like to comment on, 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 mm. on this question as, as well. I mean, what just, and one sort of just build to, to the to question is, I guess, you know, for, for accessing these courses, it's been more easy for US retailers, uh, suppliers, than it has for um, the rest of the world because of the travel and, and the costs and so on. So, you know, this is an opportunity, isn't it? Yeah, no, I mean, I'd look at it from two lenses, Dan. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that it will be more efficient, right? And I do like efficiency in time and, you know, investment and stuff like that. So it will be lower cost in terms of time, lower cost in terms of monetary cost. Um, I think it's better than not having it. So I would encourage people to give it a shot. There's very little to lose and a lot to gain. So if it works for some, great. If it doesn't work 100%, well, that's fine because 80% is okay in the current environment where most people can't even travel. You know, you can't even leave your current country. So I'd say it's a great development. It'll be interesting to see how it pans out in 21. I still am a firm believer in, you know, you learn by your network, you learn by the interaction, you learn by the mentorship. So, you know, even when I think about our own business and the work environment, people, and I'm thinking about new graduates who even join our own firm, they won't really learn in a one bed apartment on an online experience, no interaction. That just doesn't work, right? So there has to be a blended learning approach would be my view. And I think when we get back to some sort of normality in 21, 22, it will be a combination of both uh, would be how I would probably see it. Yeah, great, no, great, great thoughts. Um, well, look, we're gonna go to the panel now. Uh, Frank, you're staying with us. Dan, I really wanna thank you for giving up your time. I know you're, you're going straight to a lecture, so maybe you can, um, you can, you can tell some of your students what you've just been doing, because I, I mean, I think it's interesting, but uh, hopefully you do too. All right, thank you for having me. Have a good day. Take care, well, Dan. Thanks very much for joining us. So Frank, um, if you stay with us, then if I could uh, invite um, Jakob Scram, um, who's currently CEO at Norwegian, um, but of course, uh, many people in our industry will know him very well. He was formerly group president of Circle K in Europe and has a very, um, uh, impressive, uh, has, has, has had a very impressive career in our industry uh, uh, before that. Um, and also Pablo Andone, if I can welcome you, Pablo, your, um, your CEO, of, your president uh, at AMPM, your business in, a, in Central America uh, uh, and uh, growing fast across seven countries of Central America. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But if, uh, if we could sort of, you know, build on some of the, the questions that we've been discussing uh, so far. And if I could come to you first, uh, Jacob. Um, now, uh, one of the big questions, I guess, that we haven't really tackled so far, we've looked a lot at academic education and how important that is, third level education, as, as Frank's been, you know, very eloquently describing his own experience and how important it was uh, in, his, in his personal development. Um, but, you know, looking at our industry globally, convenience and fuels retail, um, there haven't been many books uh, written about it. And yet you look at other sectors, uh, other retail sectors for that matter, supermarkets, um, uh, you, you know, other business areas, and you, you, the bookshelves are stuffed with, uh, with publications. Uh, you know, so w w why is that? And before you, you kind of answer, you kind of answered that question already, Jakob, because you, you, you published, and if we could just show that um, on screen, you've published a, a very, um, you know, excellent uh, a book uh, on, on not just our sector, but your experiences in our sector. And and the essence of, of business management, um, you know, that uh, I guess you've 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 developed uh, through your career. Um, but why, you know, if I could perhaps ask you first about the book and your experience with publishing it, 
Um, why don't we see, given the importance of our sector globally, why don't we see more books? Yeah, I, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, joining. Thank you for uh, uh, giving me the opportunity to come, to come back to, uh, the, I have to say, my home convenience retailing. Um, I'm joining from uh, Oslo. Um, that's nice. Uh, but to go to your questions, I, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure. And, and that's what kind of struck me also when I was writing the book, that uh, there are no books, really uh, big books within convenience retailing. Uh, it might be that um, uh, I mean, if you take if you take uh, few, uh, fuel retail, uh, I, I think the kind of the sexy thing uh, has been always the car, <laughs> and therefore there's a lot of uh, books about uh, the car, car productions, uh, car companies, car uh, CEOs, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, fuel was just something you needed to kind of keep on with the car. So maybe there hasn't been any attention to it. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, then I would say retailing has traditionally been a mom and a pop uh, kind of uh, business type of business. And it's start in the 80s, 90s, we saw chains moving. And then early 2000s, more and more chains came into, into uh, retailing. And I think if we see now, now there's much more attention to retailing. Uh, much more people are trying to get competence from there, etc. Because retailing is actually quite sophisticated, uh, especially the last 10, 15 years with the category management, with the marketing programs, with innovation, uh, very rapidly uh, product concept innovations, etc. Supply chain management, uh, all of this. So it started to be rather sophisticated. So at least I think that's some of the explanations why, why uh, there's no more uh, books about it. But hopefully going forward, there will be much more books about uh, fuel retailing and, and retailing. I, I, I agree with you. Um, just thinking about you know, the, 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 your book and, and, and how it can help executives you know, under pressure. I think it was useful before the current situation. Um, it's really useful now, um, isn't it? Because every, all executive leaders are under more pressure than ever and have to change their business and, and manage the, you know, manage through, through, um, you know, through, through very significant uh, challenge and change. Um, how much, I mean, how important do you think, um, how much does it equip you managers, do you think, uh, to, to, how important is it for them to be, I, I guess, taught leadership and to, you know, to have a toolkit like, uh, like the essence of business to guide them through um through these difficult times um i am um, i hope that it could be a good guidance because uh, this book uh, that really talks about the five elements uh, that i find is the essence of business that number one you have to create results uh, i mean any company that doesn't create result results is out of business but that's not the most sexy thing to talk about ebit they are or ebit or return on capital employed etc it's just a result of everything else you do, like strategy, execution, people, and then especially leadership wrapping it all in. Uh, so the book is not only about building business in normal times. Uh, I also think uh, all those five elements is as important in crisis times. I can give you an example from my own. I, I moved then from being over 20 years in the convenience industry, and now I'm eight months into the airline industry. I never worked with the airline industry before. Um, and <laughs> one thing was, it was uh, rather special to start in a new industry, a complex industry, a very, uh, a, a very conservative industry, I have to say. Um, uh, so, uh, and then suddenly everything exploded with COVID and crisis management. We needed to get 150 planes down on the ground, you needed to furlough 8,000 people, you need to get cost out of the system, etc. But then when you've done that, that happens in 14 days, 20 days, you move into a hibernation phase. And then you really start to say, talk or think, first of all, we need some financial restructuring plan, that's one thing. But the other thing is a business restructuring plan, because the world will never be the same afterwards. Then you start thinking through your strategy, your execution, your people, your leadership. Uh, and that's what we used the time to 
really finding out how should we look like after COVID. And then I used a lot of the uh, frameworks, the thinking that I've done in the book. So I actually, I actually used my own book quite a lot, uh, trying to rebuild the new Norwegian. Well, that's, that's fascinating. Love to come back to that. I'm sure Frank would like to, to follow up on that. But let me just introduce, thank you very much, Jacob. Let me introduce Pablo. Um, Pablo, you, you're president of AMPM in Central America. Um, you're, now, hang on a minute. I mean, you're, 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 you're president, but you're also a NACS master of convenience. And I, I know what this means. Uh, it means you've done every course that NACS offer. It, you own your business. You're developing across seven Central American countries. I, I, I think you have 45 stores in Nicaragua and two in Panama, but you're also looking at Costa Rica, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, Dominican Republic. I think they're all in your sites, aren't they? Um, how important, you know, how much uh, has, has, has it helped you to, if you like, to, 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 to do some of these, these NAX courses? Well, first of all, hello, uh, Dan. Thank you for, for having me and, and all, all the attendees here and the panelists. Um, I believe that uh, education is very important. I, I agree with uh, a little bit uh, with Dan Hooker and uh, Frank Gleason about uh, the development of the leader. Uh, I believe that I have been uh, lucky enough to be uh, uh, filled with uh, opportunities of education and uh, networking and, and mentoring, as, as Frank said. So I really strongly believe that leadership can be developed, uh, not uh, not necessarily uh, born with you. You you have to have certain uh, traits, uh, especially the that need for knowledge uh, to to continue to grow, to continue to learn. So um, because of that, I, I I was I was with the need to to continue to professionalize my my education. I, I finished up my master's degrees uh, almost 12 years ago. Imagine that we didn't have an iPhone or, or iPad in that time. So um, when I started seeing NACS education programs, uh, I, really, I really liked them a lot because you had a, a, a mix of great education uh, universities and also the tropicalization or the particularity of our industry as you say, there's not much options right now. So, so I thought it was a no brainer. Uh, I, I really wanted to make an update for my master's degree. So I thought it was the best way for me to, to make an update for the education and also to, to learn more about our business and our industry. It makes 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 perfect sense, Frank. Um, just thinking about where you know where the discussions got got to, listening to what Dan had to say, um, listening to Jacob's experience, and you know Jacob using his book, and then Pablo and how he's built how he's building his business, which is 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 growing very very quickly. I mean, what's your what's your what's your thoughts in terms of um, you know uh, where 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 we're going with this and and how important uh, education could be uh, in, 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 in business. Yeah, my, my advice is kind of two things. The first one, I'll, I'll pick up on Jacob's book, for instance. So the, the technique skills and the information that you'll get from a book like Jacob's are completely transferable to other industries. So I, I have no doubt that what he's learned and honed over his time in the convenience retail industry will, will absolutely make Norwegian a success and will transfer. I also think that, you know, from Pablo's perspective, you know, you, an entrepreneur coming into a sector or who wants, who has the fundamental drive or desire can absolutely professionalize the way they would do business better and be world-class, best in class and dominate a marketplace by taking all of the knowledge and learning and applying it to their business. And I've no doubt, again, that those skills completely transferable you know and and you know if you think about the principles that they're built on good sound business principles but applied in a convenience or a fuel retailing sector and and, and all of which puts you in the top 10 percent or the best in class and you know some of the companies that Jacobs work for have I work for are top tier companies and they're, they're there for a reason because they do things really well and they invest in people they they take processes and you know they drive leadership and all of which as I said is something that our industry has been good at. And, you know, I, I, I'll, again, I'll give Max a, a shout out for this. They have really helped move the bar up and, you know, 
Henry will always take the time or Hank will always take the time to, to guide young executives, encourage young executives and companies to avail of what's, ava what's there for them. No, very, very, very good thoughts. Um, so look, look, a question for, for everybody. Um, obviously, uh, executives like your leaders like yourselves, uh, Jacob, Pablo, Frank, you'll really push your, <clears throat> your, young, your young managers to young leaders. Uh, you'll recognize the, the, they, you know, that they can benefit from this and you'll push them forward. But that doesn't always happen um, in every in every business, and there'll be a lot of you know young young uh, people who are thinking about their future, uh, perhaps uh, who will watch this uh, and will think, well, you know, how do I how do I sort of how do I create my own um, my own future? Um, you know, what 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 would your advice be to them? You know, in terms of uh, how they should look at their career development, and perhaps Jacob, I could I could ask you about that. You know, what would your advice be to someone who? Who, if you like, aspires to to develop, um, and they they need to convince their boss it's the right thing to do. I would say um, <clears throat> the first advice I would give is uh, don't plan too much, uh, have fun, um, and that's uh, actually a serious comment. I I, I think it's uh, so important to succeed as a as a leader at some point or another point is that uh, you have to enjoy what you're doing. You have to have passion you have to burn for the things you're doing and and then uh, if you have the leadership dna if you have people around you then you will emerge on that but uh, don't have these five years plans and don't be so uh, focused on uh, how your uh, facebook should look like or your profiles etc make sure that what you do you do it properly and you have fun while you do it so that's one thing the second thing is that uh, um, uh, you have to take risk. Uh, I think it's important. Uh, um, I, I sometimes meet uh, uh, younger people that has never failed, that has never uh, kind of taken risks uh, because they are afraid of, uh, of ruining their uh, career. I would say a career without any risk taking, without not having been down in the floor, with not having scar face, then you, if you want to be an executive, you have to look like a warrior. You have to look like a Scarface. You have to have uh, been uh, in fights. You have to uh, have failed. You have to have, have success. That's super important. When I recruit executives into my management team, I, di I uh, look for people that has uh, uh, not succeeded in everything because I know that if they survive that, they are strong. Uh, and, and the third thing I would say is that uh, uh, sometimes I, I think um, people are too focused on uh, uh, do the leaders actually uh, see what we do um, and they are very focused on, on, on uh, broadcasting what they are doing. If you're working in a professional company, uh, then they have good people processes then they follow, they understand uh, talent development, they understand people development, not only talent development, and then you are seen. You don't need to think about uh, if I'm seen, etc. You are seen, you are observed, uh, and, and the good things are, are coming through. So um, basically, in, in my view, it's down to have fun, have passion, take risks, and don't think too much about if you're seen or not. Oh, I think it's some really great advice there. Um, look, I'm going to come to you uh, in a minute, Frank. But Pablo, um, so what would your would you agree with, with with that, or would you you know would you have builds on that for advising you know young young executives who 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 you know who want to be a success and and want to be fulfilled in their careers? Yes, I I agree with with Jacob. Of course, uh, very interesting book and very interesting experience he has. Um, I believe that it's a bit of investment. Uh, for me, it's always been about investment. Uh, I make the rationalization as you invest in a company, you usually invest in technology uh, to make uh, life easier. You, may, you invest in green energy to save uh, uh, technology, to save uh, energy uh, bill. And of course, you have to invest in yourself. So, so... For me, it's a question about investment in time. When you invest uh, in, in time for yourself, uh, especially if it's a good education, uh, contribution or retribution is going to come later. So, 
So I believe that if you want to succeed in life, you have to have uh, that that need for for knowledge, for education, for you to be better. Always thinking about how to be better. How how can you learn from the people who are successful? How can you learn from mistakes of of other people? And um, and how can you educate yourself better for for the future? Especially in these times that we are having right now, uh, it's it's very important to to think that way. And Frank, thank you, Pablo. Terrific thoughts as, as well from you. And Frank, you know, um, what's your thought? Have, have take risks. Have to have battle scars. You know, a lot of those points really resonate, don't they? Yeah, so I'm going to agree and disagree with Jacob because I think this would be a bit of fun as well. <laughs> so uh, I, I love having fun. You got to work in a business that you care about and with people that you like and, you know, you have a bit of camaraderie. So fun is critical and risk taking is absolutely critical because you're not going to fail and learn. You got to fail fast and learn fast would be my sense. Uh, I think resilience is critical too. So I think Jacob mentioned that in, in his comments and, you know, having that staying power and ability to take knocks, recover. And it's certainly a badge of honor in the US when you do fail that you get back up and you dust yourself off and you go at it again. But but I, I'm a bit of a planner, if I'm being honest. So I, I tell a lot of young people, I do a lot of town halls and, and kind of a lot of communication sessions out in the field, typically with frontline managers. And, you know, I'm always asked about, well, when are we getting more money and how can I get paid more, blah, blah, blah. And I say, hey, Best way to get paid more money is to get promoted. Best way to promote it is to educate yourself and, you know, put yourself out there and take risk and go for it because they're the guys that actually move quick through the ranks and tend to, to get the results and tend to get promoted. Uh, I'm a firm believer in trying to upskill folks. So I do a bit of the GM 101 training. So I go down and train frontline managers as often as I can, give them the benefit of my skills in a very layman language so they can understand it. And, you know, the benefits for me are if my frontline guys understand how to manage a P&L and get a return on investment, as Jacob has mentioned, pretty, pretty sure that'll roll up to a number for me. So I get the accumulation of that in my business. So I'm very much in the kind of educate coach uh, space, but um, certainly would feel people need to plan. And I've always set goals. I mean, you know, when I, when I joined Nax, I said, well, how, how, could I, how could I get on the international committee? When I was on the international committee, how could I be chairman? When I was chairman of that, how could I get on the board? Then how could I become chairman, right? So I've always set a bit of a, an aspirational goal, maybe maybe to myself and maybe not told people about it, but you have to have something that you're really striving for. And in Jakob, I, it's probably get those 150 planes going again. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, first of all, I have to say, Frank, we have had a lot of fun together, so we de definitely know that kind of things. And uh, yes, I agree with you. It's important to have a target. It's important to have a goal. It's important to have an aspiration. As long as the goal doesn't drive you, saying that uh, mm -hmm. I want to be a CEO in five years, that's fine to have an aspiration. But if that's the only thing that drives you, you can kind of uh, miss opportunities along mm -hmm. the way. So. It's important sometimes to just throw you into the river and, and <laughs> enjoy kind of the river ride while it's, it's going there. Oh, and, and I, I'd, I'd actually build on that, Jakob. I mean, I've actually changed industries several times. So I've taken a lot of risk. You know, I've moved from convenience business into food services. I've been, uh, I've actually, I think that's the benefit of, you know, having confidence or belief. And you, you talk about that. I mean, I've heard you speak so many times that, you know, you making that shift from a very, very senior role within a very big organization to take on a new challenge. Now, you would not have expected the challenge you have right now, but still, that to me shows, um, I suppose, a bit of grit or a bit of determination, but also the belief, you know, that, that you can be successful. If I can make a comment on that, because I, I think that's very interesting, because when I stopped in Circle K after 22 years, I moved more into board positions, uh, consultancy, uh, uh, investing in startups, things like that, where I only kind of uh, had my own, uh, to, uh, my own person to care about. And it was really good and I felt comfortable. I didn't have that same pressure, etc. But after I'd done that in one and a half year, I, I learned that my DNA is really to be together with people in mm -hmm. big corporations setting hairy targets and it's the journey that really gives me energy it's the journey completing something from a to b uh, with a hairy target and achieving that together with people and look back 
that's what gives me energy. That's what drives me. Uh, and therefore, I just had to go back to a company with some pulse. Uh, and um, maybe this is a little bit too much pulse I've, I've got now with all these airplanes on the ground. But, uh, but still, it fills me with energy. And uh, bottom line, uh, I think when you dare to kind of try different things, you also find more about uh, where is your DNA. Um, and I think I found mine. You know, I, I don't think we can we can we can finish up in a better way. Um, we're at 45 <laughs> minutes. We always we always try and finish Shop Talk Live exactly on time because we've got you know busy people watching us. I'd like to Frank. Uh, I mean, I, I'd like to thank um, Jacob, uh, Frank, and, and and Pablo, and and wish you you know uh, Godspeed and good luck on your own journeys. I mean, Jacob with uh, with Norwegian, um, you know, and what leadership uh, you know we can see there. Uh, Frank, you know, with Aramark and, uh, you know, all, all that you're, you're, you know, the huge determination that you're bringing to that. And again, through challenging times in, uh, in, 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 in that sector of the business. And Pablo, you know, with the, your success uh, through Central America with your huge drive, you know. So thank you very much for, um, for joining us. I think it's been an absolutely fascinating um, episode of Shop Talk and, you know, very much thinking about uh, the future of our industry and, uh, and you know the young leaders that are coming up and the and the leaders that are that are doing their stuff now so thanks very much uh, everybody for joining and um you know look forward to to chatting soon hopefully uh, you know face to face um in a in a in a bar somewhere thanks very much for watching las vegas next year with the next show <laughs> <laughs> thank you very See much you. Bye. Bye. bye 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 Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, I thank our, our guests. Uh, we've had a great audience from 17 countries uh, for this episode, and we'll be back again with you soon. Good afternoon.